So the next time we meet in the lab, we'll be doing an immunology structure and function workshop. So uh, this is designed to put some of the material you've had in the lectures into some sort of context. So immunology is one of these disciplines where there's lots of different technical words going around. Uh, there's lots of different structures. There's lots of different cell types. There's lots of different proteins. And putting them all together can be a little bit tricky. So what we're going to be doing is to think about uh, the structures and functions of uh, some important cells uh, and tissues in the immune system. So if we look at this uh, structure here, here uh, on the microscope, we could be thinking, well, you know, why is uh, what are those uh, structures there? Uh, why are they staining darker? Where are the immune cells? Uh, what's going on in these sorts of tissues? So we'll first of all think about the important organs in the immune system. So you've been introduced to some of these in the lectures. Uh, we'll be looking at lymph nodes, we'll be looking at the spleen, we'll also look at the thymus and the tonsils and trying to understand how those uh, tissues are organised and what the various different structures of them are. In order to do this, we're going to need to think about some histology. So histology is kind of looking at the detailed so, you know, sort of cellular level anatomy of different tissues. Um, and we need to think about a couple of different histological techniques. And one of the most important things uh, with histology is making microscope slides and then what's doing what's called H and E staining. So H and E stands for hematoxylin and eosinin. This is a very commonly used stain in histology. So H and E staining, well, there's actually two dyes in that stain. First of all, there's hematoxylin, which is a basic dye. Um, so it's, itself is basic, so uh, acidic things in the cell are attracted to it. Um, so things like DNA and RNA, these are acids in the cell, so they will bind to the hematoxylin molecule and they will turn structures in the cell blue. And it also contains eosin, which is an acidic dye. So uh, it's an acid, so basic things in the cell are attracted to it, and they stain pink when you do that. So quite a lot of cytosolic proteins have basic residues on the cell surface, so those are uh, combined to the dye to stain things pink. So this stain is really useful when dealing with immunology. So if we look at this lymphocyte here, so this is a transmission electron microscope image, uh, we can see that this lymphocyte, uh, there's a lot of nucleus uh, and relatively little cytosol. And of course, the nucleus is full of DNA and RNA. So it's uh, when we do an H&E stain, uh, it will stain uh, really strongly blue. So here you can see there's a lymphocyte. These cells around here, well, these are red blood cells, which of course don't have a nucleus. Uh, so they're staining pink, uh, and the lymphocyte here is staining uh, really quite dark blue. So it makes it very easy to spot immune cells when you're looking at various different tissue sections. So we've prepared some slides for you to have a look at in the practical. Uh, the reason we've prepared them is just quite a long protocol to do this fixing and staining because uh, what you've got to do is to first of all you've got to fix the tissue uh, in paraffin. So you kill the tissue and you embed it in paraffin uh, so it's nice and solid. You then section it with what's called a microtome. So that makes really thin sections sort of three to five micrometers uh, in thickness um, and uh, so we've got really thin sections of that of that tissue. Uh, you then you have to dissolve the wax uh, with uh, xylene and then you put it on a microscope slide and then you do your H&E staining. So this is quite an involved protocol that we wouldn't have time to do in the lab usually. So we're going to give you some pre-prepared uh, sections of various different tissues. So, uh, so when you do these sorts of protocols, you get sections that look a little bit like this. So this one, uh, for example, is a lymph node in cross section. And we can see that there's various different aspects of internal structure. So we can see that this bit uh, is uh, staining a bit darker than this bit. There are internal structures there. There's some bits there which aren't stained at all. Uh, so we're going to be thinking about, well, what are those different structures? And what does the different staining tell us about the structure and function of those organs? However, for really good understanding of immunology, it's not good enough to just know the sort of overall shapes of tissues. What we'd really like to know is which particular cells we're looking at. So if we're thinking about lymphocytes, an H and E stain will show us where the lymphocytes are, but they won't tell us the difference between B cells and T cells. So in order to do that, we need to do a technique called immunohistochemistry. Uh, and that immuno bit uh, implies that we're doing something to do with antibodies. So the way that this technique works is if here we've got a cell and we've got some sort of cell surface protein that's characteristic for a particular cell type. We then use a primary antibody. So that sticks to that cell surface protein's really specific recognition. So that sticks to the cell surface. 
We then use a secondary antibody, so that secondary antibody sticks to the first antibody, and that secondary antibody has an enzyme uh, attached to it uh, called horseradish peroxidase, or HRP for short. And what peroxidases do is they react with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, so the reaction that happens here, so we give a synthetic substrate called DAB. Uh, so in the presence of house redis peroxidase, DAB and hydrogen peroxide will react to give water and then uh, a DAB precipitate. And that DAB precipitate is uh, brown in colour um, and it's precipitate so it's insoluble. So this means that we can identify where particular proteins are in the cell. So if we look at this section here, obviously we've got quite a lot of brown staining there. Uh, so that is the result of that DAB uh, precipitate reaction. So that tells us that this particular protein here, because of the antibodies, that is where uh, it's located within the cell. So we can start to identify at a molecular level where particular proteins are within the cell. And this is a really great technique because, as you know from the lectures, immune cells have characteristic proteins expressed on their cell surface. Their cell surface is very rich uh, in exposed proteins. So the three markers that we're going to use in the practical, well, we've got a marker of T cells, uh, and that marker is called CD3. Uh, we've got a marker of B cells, and that marker is CD20. And we've also got a macrophage marker, which is CD68. Uh, so uh, you might want to go and have a look and find out what those different proteins are, but they're very characteristic signatures of those particular cell types. So we really hope the workshop uh, complements the lectures nicely and helps you to understand all the various different components of the immune system, both at a sort of tissue level, but also getting more uh, to a molecular level. Uh, we'd really recommend that you bring your lecture notes to the practical. That will be really helpful uh, in understanding what's going on and also to make the links between the structures that you're seeing and the content that you've had in the lectures. So I look forward to seeing you in the lab.